Good morning. <clears throat> free will. All of us have free will. We get to make choices. We get to make decisions. Sometimes we make good choices. Sometimes our decisions could be better. I wasn't sure how to approach the Lord's Supper's talk today until yesterday when I looked down where we keep our keys and I found something I've actually been keeping now for 27 years. I've told the story of some of the teens before. It's a little rock and I call it Idiot Rock. There's a story that goes with it. Uh, it was about, uh, we had three friends and I, we were living in Texas, we were going to go to Big Bend National Park for a camping hiking trip and the last day of the trip, we had planned to do an eight-hour rafting trip down uh, the Rio Grande River. And the, uh, we got out to the park. We had a great day hiking for four days in the mountains and sleeping out in the stars. In the morning, we woke up for the rafting trip, something we had spent quite a bit of money for. And did, we didn't have a lot of money back then. We got up that morning, and there was a norther coming in. Now that's Texas talk, but a northern means that it's a cold front, a severe cold front. So we checked with the uh, people who were doing the, uh, the whitewater rafting trip, and what they told us was, yes, there is a northern coming through, but, the, uh, but we're going, so you've already paid the money, you don't, uh, there's no refunds, you're, you're quite welcome to go if you wish, but uh, there's a spot for you on the, uh, on the rubber boat. And the four of us huddled and decided that well, these weather forecasters tend to be conservative, so that we would, uh, we would go on the trip. It's probably 7 o'clock in the morning. We had the boat in the water by 8, and by 8.10, the cold front came in. <laughs> Temperature dropped from maybe 65 degrees, initially down into the 50s, and then the 40s, and then the 30s. This was meant to be an 8-hour trip on the river through canyons, not many places to get off. This is before cell phones, before we had no capability to be able to pull the boat off the water. <clears throat> we were dressed in shorts, t-shirts. <laughs> then it started to hail. We paddled as fast as we could, and sometimes we just stop and, and hold the paddles up in the air to catch the strong wind <laughs> and have us blow us down river. It, but this is not a funny story, folks, please. <laughs> We did that eight-hour trip in three and a half hours. <laughs> Freezing, extremely cold. We lost feeling in our fingers, hands were just numb. Um, we teeth had long stopped chattering probably an hour into the trip. We were that, that cold, seriously cold. Hyperthermia was setting in. By the time we got off the river, it was time to take our life jackets off. And none of us had feeling in our fingers or the strength to be able to undo the clasps. You know that clasps you push the buttons in to take the life jackets off. And I found this, this little rock on the shore. And I held it like this, because I couldn't really feel fingers at all. And I just pushed those buttons in, get the life jacket off, then I helped three of my friends do the same thing. <clears throat> we got back to, and we left as quick as we could in the car, turned the heaters up and got back to the uh, hotel where we just immediately took hot showers to, to warm up. When it was done, we decided that the four of us were complete idiots for going out that day. And hence the name Idiot Rock. I've kept that rock as a reminder that is a, there are times you've got to bring priorities into your own life and think what's most important. And at the time, we were worrying about losing $50 worth of a, a day on a boat and not worrying what was really most important to us. So, with that, what does that mean for the Lord's Supper? Jesus has told us that we need to forgive others. Right? Are there places in your heart, maybe a family member or a friend has done something against you, and you haven't quite found time to forgive them yet? Maybe there's someone out there that needs your help. Maybe not financial help, maybe just some of your time, be able to talk through something or to, or to put a smile on somebody's face. But trying something to help others. Maybe you have a neighbor or a friend you need to bring to church here. Jesus has told us many times, you need to be reach out to others and help bring others to him. 
Or maybe yourself, you haven't found your own heart for God yet. And maybe it's those decisions and things that you can make. It's really coming back to the priorities of what your life is and how you direct things. It, it means your actions and also your inactions. Jesus had a choice. When you go to Matthew 26, verse 38, this is after the Lord, Lord's Supper. He's in the garden and he's talking to his disciples, disciples and he says, in verse 38, he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. We have free choice. But as I take Lord's Supper today, I ask, are you thinking about your will? Or are you asking about what God wants us to do? Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're here today to remember that you are our rock, that we lean so much on you, and it was your life Jesus' life that was sacrificed for us. And he did that freely, knowing the impact and the pain it would have on him. He did it because you willed it. And we ask that you direct each of our hearts and have us understand your will and open us and open our hearts and allow us to do the things that you would have us do. And as we take this Lord's Supper today, help us remember that your son committed the sacrifice for us. But it was at your command. In your son's name we pray. Amen.